Anyway, welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, I'm going to be going over a grouping of a uh, chief petty officer who served in the Navy for 20 years. So uh, there are quite a few items in this grouping. I got two medal bars and then I got most most of his, uh, all of his uh, campaign medals, which are all boxed, which is something that's very unique and you really don't see most of these veterans. They uh the Navy veterans especially, they like to uh, take their medals and they'd uh, sew them together and make a metal bar, even though it was a regulation. Plenty of them did it, but this individual kept all his medals in the original boxes with the wrapping, so uh, he was very particular about that. And uh, I have two different metal bars. Um, this is the first one. This is kind of the later issue one. It's kind of the standard br rack. It's not brass, actually, but I do have a... I do have another rack here that this is a, a brass rack so this is a gemsco so you can see with the three stars on his good conduct metal that he actually wore this a bit a bit uh earlier in his service but overall it's very neat we got one piece of a u.s navy Ch chief petty officer insignia and uh this is his primary bar, though. So, four campaign stars and then four good conduct medals. So, that equates to 20, exactly 20 years in service. Because each one is four years. So, he uh, enlisted in the Navy in 1942 as a fire controlman. Uh, he spent about a year in the States uh, going through training as a fire controlman. And he eventually did go overseas in early 1943 so i'll go over some of his medals so put that to the side so we'll go over the occupation medal interestingly there are three of these but this one is not actually an occupation medal this is his good conduct medal so makes sense you keep this in the case for some reason i don't know what's with the sizing all the campaign medals are all the same sizes, including the occupation metal, but for some reason the occupation metal's got a larger box. I'm not really sure why, but the occupation metals did come out in the late 40s and the campaign metals were, came out during World War II. And all his are naval issues, which makes it very cool. And the boxes confirm that. So let's go over the first uh, US Navy commendation metal. And I mean, excuse me, his only. So, of course, uh, due to the timing in which he served in the Navy, this would be a late war variation. So, uh, it's definitely some, uh, the, the finish on it is very, very worn. There was a little bit of uh, corrosion, but overall it's a very nice metal and it's a stamped one and we can see 1945. So actually, wait a minute, um, I I mix that up. It's not four years in service, it's actually technically three years, because yeah, yeah, because 42 to 45, yeah, it's slightly different than the Army, in the sense that maybe it's three years, but uh, this one's in very nice shape. The ribbon's in really, really intact, and it also has his second award and third award for his post-war service, so that's really neat. So, yeah, the uh, occupation metal box is completely blank. Okay, the next metal is his uh, European, African, Middle Eastern campaign metal. This one also has the wrappings. And it's in, it's got a bit of corrosion on it, so you never know. This may, some of the stuff may have been sitting in a shadow box and the family just happened to find some of this stuff. Here's another occupation metal pretty sure okay this is the one this is the nice one so um the reason there are three of them now that i notice is that so he uh receives two uh clasps because this is the european one and there's also a uh, one for asia so it would make sense that he'd be given two different medals So, yeah, definitely one of my favorite medals, and notice the occupation medals. The design on the planchette is different for the naval issue rather than the Army and Air Corps issue. 
So you can also notice that uh, with some of these campaign medals, the, uh, the lid of the box is attached to it. Then here's the American campaign medal. This is damage uh, victory medal. So this is a 1946 one. Very interesting. It's kind of a, it's kind of an, the ribbon is kind of an oddity, and it's got a, it's got a bit of a thicker brooch. And here is the Pacific Theater ribbon. Is uh, Bart, he was in both theaters of operations. We also got a National Defense Medal, which uh, here's an original bag for uh, when this medal came out. And I think the early 50s. Here's the other uh, Occupation Service Medal. This is just the standard one, so I guess uh, he, uh, the class came out later. But here's the other one I was talking about, and you can see the clasp on this medal is for Asia. So, yeah, that's definitely a very interesting. I could attempt to put the clasp on this metal but it seems I'd have to take the brooch off and I, I don't really want to do that so I think I'm going to keep it as is but uh definitely has a very early interesting set of metals so uh, I'm glad he kept all his metals in the boxes that makes it really nice so Here are his main medals. So let me talk to you about uh, Zuber Service. So of course, he uh, he went overseas in early 1943, and he spent most of his time in the Pacific Theater of Operations on the USS Bronson. The Bronson uh, was deployed in a variety of statuses in the Pacific. It did all kinds of things, uh, you know troop transportation, escort, that kind of thing. And he was mustered off the ship the 7th of November, 1943, as I recall. And uh, a month later, the Bronson was struck by a kamikaze and sunk. So he was very fortunate because uh, there was a huge fire, killed a bunch of people. But uh, he was already back in the States by that time. And I know he was, uh, he was aboard the Wallace uh, L. Wind, which was another destroyer. So the Bronson was a Fletcher class destroyer and the Wallace L. Wynn was, as I recall, another Fletcher class destroyer. So uh, it spent most of its time in the Pacific theater, but it did enter the European theater of operations. Thus it got, that's where he got the medal. And it also spent a bit of time in the Philippines. Um, Towards the end of the war, it was doing quite a some bombardment operations for Okinawa and Iwo Jima. So, uh, you know, escort operations, so pre-naval bombardment type thing. So, uh, so yeah, in that capacity. And then the war ended. He was sent home, but he remained stateside for military service. And that's where he remained during the Korean War. He was not sent overseas. Um, not overseas. And uh, I'd assume for the Europe and the Asia bar, actually probably in the late 40s, he would have received these class in the early 50s. So he went overseas on a couple tours, but he, was, he never saw the capacity of uh, combat that he saw during World War II again. So... Uh, As a fire controlman, that's definitely a very interesting MOS to look at because it was one of the more important ones in terms of the ship stability. But uh, yeah, so this is the uh, this is his uh, grouping, 
And, uh, yeah. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. And I'll uh, see you guys next time.